watching, watching the day unfold. Jada books is wonderful. It's something, it's something to behold. But if you love life as much as I do, put some, put something in the air now. And if you love Jack as much as I do, put some, put something in the air. Welcome, welcome, wem welcome. A pleasant good afternoon to you, Trinidad and Tobago friends and families. This evening, we are here once again in our series, Know Your Representative. Today, ladies and gentlemen, on set with me is Councillor for the Electoral District of Pleasantville, out of the Corporation of San Fernando, Councillor Robert Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, um, no stranger to the politics as a young man, senior politician, I will call him at the local level. So tonight, we're going to have a really nice evening with Councillor Paris, and he will really share with us what he has been doing as a local representative out of Pleasantville, some of the things that he has done and what he intends to do. So, Councillor Paris, welcome. Oh, thank are you for you? coming. How are you, my friend? Good, good, good. very good. Yes. Very good, brother. Councillor, we started this series last evening, last week, Wednesday, sorry. Yes. And the purpose of this series is intended sorry, to really bring to the front um, the issues that councillors have. Yes. You know, really share, to share with the people, to share with, the, with, with their burgesses and outside of just their burgess, to really share with the rest of Trinidad and Tobago what councillors go through, Yes. all right? Because I personally believe, councillor, all right, having been a councillor myself, that we are overlooked. We are somewhat not given that sort of respect at that local level, given the fact of the kind of representation that we do have to put out there, yes. all right, for people within our burgess, within our electoral district. And tonight, really, I would want you to get deep into sharing um, what councillors really do, um, how we all do it. Um, I mean, every councillor would be different, but yes. you will share your tact with us here. All right. So running firstly, before you get to that, I would really want you to tell us um, who is Robert Paris. All right. I mean, I know it's a lot, but let us know. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you the short condensed version. Robert Paris, um, I'm an artist. First and foremost, um, I worked in, and I still do work to some extent in the television production, radio production, advertising industry for over 25 years, right? Um, that, that is what I studied. And then I, I did my master's in entrepreneurial management from the Australian Institute of Business. I am a father of two. Um, I am a son. And um, in terms of the politics, um, Mr. Manning was my godfather. So um, everyone knows that, that more or less I would have been born into the politics. My father was a politician and a counselor before me um, during Uncle Patrick's time. And um, yeah, I, I, they, they <laughs> sometimes you know you fall into something. I, I think they always knew that I had that ability in terms of the politics because truth be told, David, Brian, my brother Addison, and they, when they were outside playing, they didn't want to play with me. So I was forced to be with the, with the politicians inside. Wow. So that is what kind of inculcated me and pushed me into the po into political, the, the political yeah. arena. Yeah. All right, and you know, um, it, it's, it's interesting. Well, I, I mean, I know some of, of, of you in terms of your, um, your, your history, yes. in terms of the politics, as you said, and the, 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 the Morins. All right, the involvement and the, the um, sort of encouragement from okay. uh, former Prime Minister um, 
I mean, the best prime minister in the world, <laughs> um, Uncle Patrick, as you said. Mm -hmm. And I know, too, the passion, having served with you on the youth league out yeah. of San Fernando East constituency, I know the passion that you had and still have, still even do. now, as a local representative. You have been a local representative um, for, the for the last 12 years now. 12 years, 12 years representing yeah. Pleasant Pleasantville, yes. a community that I'm certain you, you are you're part of. You live there as live well. Live there as well, yes. Right. Born and bred man of the soil in, yeah. in Pleasantville. All right, but, Councillor, share with me as well, too, and, and with the viewing public, all right, that um, what, what are your thoughts on young people and service in politics or through politics? So if it's the community, and by extension, nation, um, through politics, young people involvement. One of these, this is the same question I pitched to um, Councillor Johnson last Wednesday, all right, to get from him, you know, how you young people who are in the politics right now, how you all view it, um, how difficult is it, and would you really take the opportunity to encourage other young people to get themselves involved? So... I'll give you the, the, the best answer that I can, right? And the answer that I do give to most young people. First and foremost, I think that everyone should want or have a desire to serve their country um, on any level. Um, from since I was a little boy, I remember being a Cub Scout and a Scout. And you know, that was, you know, service to country in, in my eyes on that level. And you know, you go up in the ranks, you, you, you join village council, you join different community um, activist groups, you join all kinds of different things, and you finally get the opportunity whereby you would have worked so hard, and even behind the scenes with the youth league and different things, you work so hard that you get the opportunity now to serve on the level of politics. Now, we must have tolerance for each other's political ideals. Everyone have different political ideals. The ideals that I follow is that of the People's National Movement. Um, and the reason why I follow the ideals of the People's National Movement is because I, I do believe that they, they, they gave so much to Trinidad and Tobago and they continue to give, and in my opinion, they're the best vehicle to steer the governance of this country. But I do respect those who have a different opinion. Very so we respect true. each other's opinions, right? So young people that want to get into the politics, I would tell them that it's not an easy road. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe in Trinidad and Tobago, we, and not just in the politics, we have something called a generation gap. Generation gap, it can deter persons who are interested in anything because you know a lot of people, they, they don't readily accept change. They don't readily accept young persons with, with, with innovative ideas. They see uh, us as threats. Um, though I'm not even that young anymore, I'm 44 <laughs> years old now, but I started at a very young mm -hmm. age. But I will continue to advocate and continue to say that if you really want to serve your country, don't come into this with any pre premonitions of you're going to be rich. This is the lowest paying job I've ever had in my life. I'm a professional, as I said to you before, of my background television production, radio, advertising, wow. right? And it's the lowest paying job that I've ever had in my life, but it's the most rewarding because I can wake up and as I was telling someone off air, as an artist, I see things that others don't. Where I see beauty, others don't. There was a senior member of the PNM who, <clears throat> she sent me a, a very disparaging text message before screening. And she said I was putting up ugly faces all over um, the community but she didn't see it because I am an artist I saw the vision but the final outcome of what it is that we did I'm sure that she herself is enjoying what Pleasantville is becoming and um, and I'm just pouring myself out giving the community the real me right and expressing myself by enhancing my community through art and, and different projects and if I made that um, um, gathering the um, 
photos that you're talking about that were probably put up is the murals that were, the murals, the murals that, that yeah. you did yeah, the murals that all over present right. yeah. and um well i mean I, i'm certain that even the families of some of these persons who are either probably alive or, or deceased it will probably be so happy to know that the memory of their contributions Correct. from out of the out, perhaps out of that community and by extension for um san fernando is something that they're glad that the legacy lives on and yeah. And I think that is, I'm, I'm glad that is where that, the angle That is the whole thought behind it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I became a counselor, Maurice, I can say that I always wanted to honor people while they were alive, right. not when they're dead. And so all of the people that were on the murals, with the exception of Olive Smith, right, were alive at the time. So now they have had some time would have passed, some persons would have passed on, God rest their souls, but they were there to see themselves immortalized in art. art right. And right. art is something that tells a story. It transcends time. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, you know, we, we, we try to fight for that space, for that type of respect. But remember, before those murals went up there, these were open spaces that were vandalized. That's right. And they were, you know, they, they were, they, 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 there, was, there was no value to it, to other persons, but now... You're seeing the value. Right, yes. you see the value of you it. You have um, the, the young people that in the community, you know, asking questions. Ask they questions. Want to know who this Putting is. footprints in the it's sand. It, that's yes. right, that's right. So I think it was, I saw it and my, myself, and I, it, it, I, so commend, I commend that project. Thank the you. both of them, one, I think one's at the... One you know, is in Shaconia Avenue video. when you're coming in, and the other one is by the bus shelter so the outside of the village. The village yeah. Robert, I want to go back to yeah. one of the points that you make mention because I want to really expand on that a little more. And it, it is a cry that you hear, um, you're talking about the politics, and yes. you, you expressed uh, you expressed from your perspective as a young, uh, young person yourself, um, the encouragement and you willing to encourage others to get, other young people yeah. to get involved in politics. But you would hear young people now um, or even people on the whole within this country, all right, crying the, 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 the desire not to get involved in politics. And has, it has a lot to do with the type of politics that we, yeah. have, we have at this time. Yeah. I mean, do as I said last, um, well, I said the last evening, that it's an adversarial um, system, but the, the essence of, of, of the politics that we have going on now, you yeah. know, within, within our governance structure, yeah. um, you know, that... that it nasty it's deep it, it, it you know how would you really how would you really you know thing but before you you answer let me just um take a time we want to we want to um break for a, a few minutes sure all right and so ladies and gentlemen we will be back just in a minute to hi this is Michael Johnson, councillor for Marabella West. And this is Local Government <laughs> and You. Here we will be discussing local government law and practice. How does it affect you on the ground in the community? So stay tuned to NCBN, coming soon. This is the National Patriot Wendell Eversley hitting you all with the facts. I connect the future with the past, elevating step by step, sweet tea and tea. PNM is the problem. We know UNC is not the solution. Soon I will be live on NCBN. Trinidad Tobago, I love you. Yes, ladies. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome back. And we are here once again, as I said, with Councillor Robert Paris from out of the San Fernando City Corporation. Councillor for the Electoral District of... Am I to stop now?
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are chatting this evening again with Councillor Robert Paris from the Electoral District of Pleasantville out of the San Fernando City Corporation. Councillor, before we went for the break, but just before again yes. you, you, you answer the question that I asked, I want to remind you viewers that we are on live Facebook, um, NCBNTT, on Facebook, YouTube, and on Instagram. Our numbers to call in, 309-8924, 309-8924, and we can take your comments and your calls in a bit. So, Councillor, I, I, I asked you with regards to the politics that is happening right now, the kind of politics we see in the parliament, <laughs> all right? Adversarial. Uh, adversarial. But uh, I, I, I think that, that's more than adversarial, all right? Um, you have young people want to shun themselves away. They, they, they want to steer away from that kind of the, um, the politics. And are we really, what's your thoughts on that? Is it that these, Senior politicians, so to speak, um, giving the right impression of what politics is. Um, is that encouraging? I mean, you would have shared your passion and that kind of thing, but how is what happening now encouraging? You know what is funny? Mr. Pandey and Uncle Patrick were friends. Mr. Pandey's wife and daughter was at his week at the home. Uncle Patrick and Basde Pandey used to go to Smokey and Bounties sometime after Parliament. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I know politics is we could have different political persuasions, different political philosophies, but at the end of the day, we serve Trinidad and Tobago. Somewhere, somewhere along the line in the last 10 years, we've gotten it wrong where persons feel it is right to insult persons, say all kinds of things that are libelous and, you know, slanderous and think that it is okay. It's not okay. We have, we have family, like my son um, called me the other day and, and he, he didn't give me a tongue lashing, but he reminded me, he saw a video of someone saying some bad things about me and he just wanted to remind me like, listen, um, it affects me as well, Yes. right? Yes. So, you know, at the end of the day, and he studies in the United States, he's doing law in the States. So, you know, at the end of the day, it may be something that the society is evolving into, but, you know, we need more people like yourself, myself, my colleague, Mr. Coutier, people who have ideas and people who really want to do this thing the correct way. Yes. Um, that can see above and think about the next generation coming up. What I'm impressed by as I walked into your studios is that young people are working here, similar to what is at Pivo Radio, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. So you have to give young persons the opportunity to express themselves, to find themselves, just as is done here, just as done in Pivo Radio, this as should be done in the politics. That's right. And they should be welcome because at the end of the day, you can't die with knowledge. No. A lot of the older persons, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's a philosophy from the past, but Mr. Manning wasn't like that. And my father wasn't like that as well. They feel as if they have to die with their boots on <laughs> and they want to do things to deter you, you know, from reaching where they would have reached. But yeah. the only constant in life, Maurice, has changed. Change. That's correct. And we have to accept the fact that Trinidad and Tobago is at a turning point now, and we will evolve, and we will be a better Trinidad and Tobago because there are people like yourself and um, persons like myself and others. There's so many others. Oh, There's yes. um, Councillor Johnson, yes. Councillor um, 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 Teresa Lynch, mm -hmm. persons who really want to make a difference, young persons. So I would still encourage the young people, and what, what I would advise is get a mentor. Yes. Get a mentor in politics. Not someone who is going to teach you the wrong things. Correct. This is not about money. No, no. If you, if money motivates you, do not get into <laughs> politics. Right, right. Because at the end of the day, right, politics is about people. people. That's right. People. people. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm really glad you make mention of that, ma'am. Uh, Robert, because, you know, and just very quickly, I want to just share, add, add to what you say, that they can't pay you. 
No. <laughs> they can't pay you for, for that labor of love. I mean, once it's genuine and, and, and it's passionate, it comes from within. Service to people can't put dollars and cents to that. No. no. All right? It has to be something, as, as I tell my um, young people in, in Faisabad, you have to be wired. Right? You have to be wired for, 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 for a job like this and even yeah. service to people on the whole. So I'm glad that you're encouraging other young people and to see the positive in, in getting involved, in just not only on the political scene, but even in community work, community in, you work, know, yeah. um, social a activities, in giving back to um, people and communities as the case may be. Definitely. All right. I, um, you also made mention to, with regards to some of the pro well, your two projects that you talk, spoke about, which is the murals that you did. Yes. And um, I know it's a, a lot that's happening with you yes. in terms, well, I mean, for the time that you're there. Um, but would you share some of the other beautification projects that you would have done out of the electoral district and perhaps some new ones that you intend to do, right? So at least the persons that are listening on from yes. Pleasantville could be a part and understand what's happening. So. Thank you for the platform. So let me explain to persons, right? So my background is business. Right. My parents all my life have run successful businesses. I have, my brother is a businessman. I am a businessman. So the most important thing we must think about, right, is the marriage between business and politics. It, it does merger at some point. So during the last three years, COVID-19 ravaged us in Trinidad That's and Tobago. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had to find a way to survive in Pleasantville. Now, I approached the businessmen with a concept geared around our community gardens. We have two community gardens in Pleasantville thus far. We have the Glen Jemmett Community Garden and we have the Josephine Goodrich Community Garden. One is long-term crops, one is short-term crops. So, Mr. Manning in 2014 asked me to meet him at the site of where Glen Jemmett Garden is, and he would have told me, son, I want you to follow the Cuban model of gardening. Wow. And I said, okay, I understand. So I did the research, and I said, okay, I know what this is, is going to be. So more or less, we are keeping the food prices within the community down because the Vegemarts, within the community buy the vegetables from, from the, us wow, wow. so we so that, that is from the garden yes they buy from the garden right and persons as well call the um i have i have some I have secretaries right i'll get into that just now but they call the secretary of agriculture and education and she will sell it to persons at wholesale price so um today my dad came to my office and he got 100 pimentos for 25 dollars mm -hmm. right so you know, persons from all over call us and they get the stuff at a better price that they would get it than when if they go somewhere else. So um, the business community decided um, to adopt benches within the community. When they adopt benches, they would now have an opportunity to beautify the area. That's right. So we had a local landscaper, one of our landscapers, Mr. Wallace, Wallace Landscaping. We paid him to landscape where the businesses would beautify and the money from the beautification would go right back into the garden so when persons in pleasantville are of need instead of me going to the mayor to ask the mayor for money through the mayor's fund or the chairman's fund or whatever we were able to um, feed pleasantville and to assist persons in need so there was a basketball camp some ncaa um, division one coaches from tennessee um, came to Pleasantville and you know I was able to rent a toilet for them we didn't have to go through the council or there was a gentleman um, that is isn't too well and his only means of, of, of earning a living was his car and the brain in his car went down so he came and I called him and I said this is something genuine give him wow. some money yes. so we're able so the community is helping the community so through these different beautifications right um, it's funny um, mm. The, the, the latest one, I didn't think that it would be controversial. I don't know why yes, tell us about it that became because controversial. <laughs> but I'm aware of... of yeah, I, I, I really don't know why it became controversial. And, 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 you're, and I'm glad that we, you, you, you raised it because, um, you know, it, it, it was controversial I yeah. mean, on social media. And there were persons who had issues yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. And I mean, it's, it's good to 
have your say on it here yes. so that people could really understand and not misinterpret, misinterpret. or choose um, you know to take it and, and play pedal foolishness right all right so yeah. so so the that side of Pleasantville Pleasantville Avenue Pleasantville Terrace you would appreciate that I have all of the socioeconomic data for my community I know the, 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 the impoverished parts I know the affluent parts now that part has the most um it has the most joblessness wow. and so socioeconomic wise it is the the lower strata of our community. community so what happened was a gentleman came to my office and he gave me the idea of putting tents in that same exact location so i told the gentleman i think it's an excellent idea but how soon and would he have the funding to do it the gentleman took over a year to get back to me. But I kept the idea in my mind. And then Mr. Wallace came, and Mr. Wallace being the person that was doing the beautifications all throughout that we were paying, I asked Wallace, what did he think about the idea and would he be able to execute it, right? Because at the end of the day, one would appreciate that I have a three year time period in which Mission. to complete everything right. that I want office. to do, yeah. right? Yeah. So Mr. Wallace said, he loves the idea and um you know during the, the COVID nineteen times Wallace was one of the persons that when we were when we got um food food hampers I would ask Wallace to assist me by making extra food hampers with the stuff from the garden. Wow. So we said to Mr. Wallace, hear what? We want to put a tent and we would like to have a place in that catchment area there to be able to feed that area. Because the persons there wouldn't have to go to the San Fernando market. They wouldn't have to come out of the area because it is important to feed ourselves. That's right. um, you know that, that the, the, the cost of wheat would have been, is, is, is threatening to go up, up yeah. right? Yeah. So flour is going up. We're going into the production of cassava flour in, in Pleasantville as well, wow. right? And so, that, is, that is something that you all are exploring? Yes, yes, we are right. actively exploring through the Secretary of Agriculture in Pleasantville. So we're going into the production of cassava flour, but the, the aim is to keep the prices down, right. um, be able to create employment for the young persons. Yes, and, and that was something that yes, I wanted to create employment for the young persons in that area. We have a lot of entrepreneurs um, within the community. We have a, a, a young lady I swear to you, the best tasting homemade juice you have ever tasted, Miss Esther Tom from Pleasantville Avenue. She makes well, it. And big up Miss Esther. Yes, big and, up Esther, and, and, man. And, and she and I had a, a, an argument in my um in my office, and I said to Esther, if you trust me and you trust this business idea that I have, you because she drives around with the juice in her car, I said you're not making money, you're losing money. And we would be targeting businesses like that to give them an opportunity. And through my experience with entrepreneurship, because you know, studying entrepreneurship on the master's level, I would be able to inculcate and teach those who want to, who are in business, to try to get into business. Right. So the, the the different beautifications, right, are aimed at local government reform. So we have different economic zones within the community. So you'd appreciate Flamingo Crescent, Flamingo Crescent, where the, where the, um, where the community garden is, that is an economic but, zone. And then we have Parakeet Boulevard that we're developing now. It's going to be beautified, and we're going to create a vending area. That's what we have in Pan Indyville this weekend, this weekend yeah, right? Yeah. So we're going to create a vending area there. Right, they already Caesar doubles is there already, and there are other persons. Have Larry, who has his Vegemite. You have Juniors driving school as oh, well, okay, yes. all within that catchment, catchment area. area. So we're we, we're stimulating the, the small and micro business Businesses from, from, from the there, and the same exact thing is what we were trying to replicate in that area that we are um, calling the Pleasantville Hollows, where I have um, invigled some business people. So we want a, another welcome to Pleasantville sign on that area. And these projects, Maurice, and this is the thing that I, can't, I cannot understand for the life of me. And, you know, it is my job as a representative to teach. These projects, when you beautify your projects, it's something called urban revitalization. When you, when you do these type of projects, what it does is it raises the equity 
in your home. Wow. So therefore, if your home was worth a hundred thousand dollars, when it is evaluated again, it would be worth maybe four or five hundred thousand. Right. So what persons don't know as well, the average cost of homes in Pleasantville has been rising for the last five years. So the average cost of a home in Pleasantville ranges from eight hundred thousand to a million. I have a modest two-bedroom home that is worth one million dollars. And therefore, these projects are aimed at adding equity to your property. When you add equity to your property now, you can go to the bank and you can borrow to add more equity to your property. So there's value there. So there's value. And, you know, and, and Robert, I, I am really impressed. I mean, not that I, I wasn't aware, but I'm glad that we are, as I said, we are using this platform and taking advantage of it, and others too, yeah. to really share what is happening, you know, the mold of what you're doing out of Pleasantville. Because truly, that economic empowerment, particularly amongst our young people, is something that I am really, really passionate about. And yeah. I'm glad that you, you know, you're finding innovative ways from right within, yeah. you know, um, to create the employment and to get young people on board and having the space to, for them to even come up with innovative um, ways to do things and yeah. introduce new things within the, the community. And so I really want to congratulate you know what we're you doing that. too in Pleasantville? And people don't know that there's something called, well, we know about recycling, but there's something called upcycling, where it is that you take things that they're not garbage, but it has value. Like for instance, we're, we're creating a furniture, um, furniture industry in Pleasantville. So we have some old oil drums and we have young persons who are very talented and we're teaching them to cut the oil drums and make furniture with them. Uh -huh. So uh, one of our entrepreneurs in Pleasantville in the Village Plaza in Dur's collection, she has um, all the furniture within Dur's collection are old oil drums. And you wouldn't believe it was an innovative gentleman, right? That from the community, young person that created that furniture. So we have a whole bunch of that and we're gonna put them on our um, community garden. We're gonna put them in our beautification. Um, so we're gonna put it there for persons to sit down and understand that, you know, we could be resourceful. That's right. You don't That's need to right. go to the government to ask them uh, for everything, correct. right? We as a community could come together and be resourceful. And then each community is different. And, correct. You know, and unique in their own de way. De definitely. Therefore, um, I mean, look at that, the, the responsibility yourself as a local representative together with other stakeholders mm -hmm. out of the community to really, as I say, harness and unearth those yes. kind of talents and skills from it in the community. So Robert, I, I want to congratulate you. Thank I you. want to congratulate you. I'll big up your whole self and the whole of Pleasantville. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to also clear too, because least least anybody, you know, wants to misinterpret when you said earlier yeah. the relationship that you there is between the politics and business, because you know that there's this fear of phobia that okay, once you're in politics and you have any alignment with business when you're corrupt, all right? And, and it's foolish, and not yeah. realizing that it must go hand in hand, yeah, all right? To. And once it's about board and there's transparency and there's legality in the, yeah. in, in, in the dealings, then you can have that relationship, Correct. because the wheel, the economic wheel must, yeah, spin, must spin, all right? So once again, you know, let me just remind you viewers that you can call in to the program here this evening at 309-8924, uh, 309-8924. Eight, we are also live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I think we have a call coming in at this time. Hello. Good evening. You're on the air. We're yes. hearing you loud and clear. Okay. So I'm calling to congratulate Councillor Paris in a great job. Well done. We are very happy in Pleasantville with the development that is going on. And, you know, we want to see more. We want to see it continuing. Also, we would want, if we could get the support from those who, you know, can give to make Pleasantville a much That's more, nice. how should I put it, beautiful place. Wow. Congratulations, Councillor Paris. Thank you. And I must say, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, my dear. So there it is. I, yeah. I'm glad that Pleasantville is locked on and listening. Yeah. All right. Um, so, councillor, you have support. All right. And, you, you know, you, she, it, the caller said something, you know, which I, I thought she was going along those lines. Eh? But I will say it because I, um, I was hurt, really, um, when, you know, I would have seen and heard some of the, the foolishness 
or the attempt to want to tarnish um, or, or pull down. Because I mean, I felt this way because I've been in this in, in, in that position. Yeah. I've been in your boots, and therefore I could understand only how you felt or still feel. I mean, you, you shared your, your, your son calling it to let you know. Well, you know, yeah. it's hurting outside there too. But it goes to show, really, all right, that um, it's the, the job as much as you know you're all into it and passionate about it, it's a thankless job as well. Yes. Because human beings really are sometimes ungrateful. <laughs> and that's the fact. All right. And if you're not grounded, and I'm saying this also to you know a lot of people out there who really put themselves out, offer themselves to serve, I want to say to you that once you do that, note well that um, it's not going to be easy. No. And in this season, yeah, Christ himself <laughs> yes. had that problem all right with human beings so you know counsel I, I too would like to encourage you all right and you know to and trust that others those senior persons all right whether it be from your organization the bnm the institution or within the community of pleasantville all right see the need to give that support and even if it's just to be that backbone or you know share that support please you know, continue doing that good work. Thank you so much. I need, I need, I need that support, I, yeah. and I appreciate it as I, well. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, Council, as you, as we, you um, spoke on on the beautification projects, yeah. and you know the some that you've started, and I'm certain that there's a lot more other projects that you would want to yes. unfold in your community. I um, I failed this last evening to share with Michael. I mean, to ask Michael's thoughts on. Two things. One, the, giving us a little understanding of the present system because it is important as well to have the viewers and particularly understand. your burgesses understand the what the, the, the limitations are with the, with the present um, system of local governance yes. um, within the country, all right, as archaic as it is. Yes. Um, and, you know, Yes, we know that councillors across the length and breadth have been doing innovative things to really work around and that kind of stuff. And the pending um, reform that is to come in. But before we you, you take there, we will take a, a break at this time and we will be back to hear that answer. Yeah. Come, no problem. Yes. If you cut me, you go see blood. And if you squeeze me, you go feel the love. We are one people under the sun. One nation under the love. So who feels But we're not really different. 99, 1% love to wine, represent all of we want to see. Happiness, prosperity, I do you and you for me. Cause if you cut me, you go see blood. And if you squeeze me, you go feel the love. We are one people under the sun. One nation under the love. So who feel the blood? Inside the band, and if you cut me, you go see blood. And if you squeeze me, you go feel the love. We are one people under the sun, one nation under the love. So who feel the black? Who feel the, black? Who feel the, white? Who feel the white? I don't know. But it's right till tomorrow night. Let 
again we are in the house here with councillor paris so councillor before we took the break um i had asked you about the Current local system. government yeah. system presently um some of the impediments <laughs> um which i am I'm aware we of have, a lot yeah. <laughs> and um how you know you really well I, I think you highlighted earlier to some of the innovative ways that you work around some of it but um, particularly to you could share some light on the intended um, introduction of the reform so, for local government. So more or less, right, the impediments in the system that exists now, they all surround um, funding. Everything is surrounded based on funding. And because of the system being top heavy, right, whereby the corporations would have to send in their draft estimates to the ministry of local government and the ministry of local government based on their allocation from um from the ministry of finance they will um be able to give you maybe as always less than what you ask for right so when you get the money it is then disseminated into all of the different electoral districts based on the different projects so everyone may think that they want everything now. That is the importance of local government. Local government, believe it or not, is everyday people government and it's uh, very important. And because of how funds are generated, right, um, at present is based on a budgetary allocation and therefore it is quite limited in how the resources are disseminated. It also leaves room for persons to assume political discrimination based on the government being in power. So therefore, in um, for instance, Separia, some of the persons who may be in power in Separia may think that there is some type of, of disparity in the, 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 um, the dissemination of, of resources. And that isn't always necessary so, right? So that is the problem with the, the current system. The proposed system is based on taxes, property tax, and um, and I was a part of the, the the dissemination of information when we were first proposing this in 2010, 
and thereafter there were some persons who said ask the tax and then they realized quickly that was a bad idea because most of your um extra surpluses as it, it, it exists today is based on land and building taxes mm -hmm. and because of the suspension of the land and building tax there is more of a need now where it is that you see shortfalls within the different aspects tax. of um, local government mm -hmm. and therefore the proposed reform you get the autonomy now to um, based on, on 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 the taxes you get the autonomy now to raise your own funds go directly there will no longer be a ministry of local government you go directly to the ministry of finance based on the projects that you need and how the money is circulated is through the the the, the, the gathering of property tax okay. So that is, is, is actually um, one of the items in the reform that we'll intend to treat with the funding issue. Because Correct. I know um, every corporation, I don't think there's any corporation could say they um, have enough money or um, they just be good with money in terms <laughs> of having, having it uh, at their disposal probably yes. to do any, uh, most or all of their projects. Yes. I think every corporation has that issue. Yes. All right. Um, Councillors, as, as a matter of fact, too, because I know for a fact that you're getting $500,000 to deal with roads yeah. within your electoral district. Um, <laughs> I can't do anything. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you really do the measurements properly <laughs> and, and, and really do the estimates properly yeah. to, to get a proper road, that's almost $300,000 roughly, you yeah. know, for one road. Yeah. All right. Um, drainage is the same drainage thing. Is the same. Um, other, and other line items as well, too. So you are, I'm glad that you made mention that the, the reform will treat with that financial, uh, that funding issue. But um, I do know as well, and I intend to really have the um, councillors um, representing through the UNC um, to the opposition um, in different um, corporations as well come in to share because I know they when it went to Parliament the opposition presently um, highlighted a couple of things as to why they are not in support and one of the things I know for a fact is that property tax issue all right being one of the driving forces uh, or one of the key items in the reform um, likewise I know they highlighted um, to the issue of the autonomy um, the disparity in autonomy in terms of um, the I think the who the, the the chairman not the chairman sorry the Ministry of Finance the Minister of Finance having that 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 authority now in terms of how they distribute and the funds or something like that but I I, I will seek to really get but, clarity but because what I have that the whole thing is is this right hence the reason why we're doing these type of projects in Pleasantville trying to bring up the the value of people's homes putting them in a different um, economic bracket so to speak. If it is that we are able to stimulate our microeconomy within our different electoral districts, you will see the, the improvement of the different services, right? Hence the reason why, again, I said the projects that we're doing in Pleasantville is aimed at adding equity to your homes. And therefore, you'll get better services as well right mm -hmm. because of the property the pending property tax and the, the property taxes never really came off of the statute you know it is still there right. it's just suspended and you know we, we 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 have to be a little bit more responsible in the way we disseminate information i mean those who oppose the this um this local government reform there are many 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 places that we meet on in behind different corridors and you know they they were very much for it mm -hmm. um i remember in 2010 to 2013 they had um their their, their idea of, of reform was devolution and they, they i will commend them they 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 are the ones who started the the um the the councillors having offices and having That's a secretary mm -hmm. but that is only one stage of the development of local government if no, you, and, and I'm going to stick the pin there and tell you that if I may, um, and it, it has a lot to do, and I'm 
personally saying this, uh, the member of parliament for Faisabad at the time, Mr. Chandra Sharma, mm -hmm. he was the minister of local government, uh, yes, yes, at the time. And he was one who, you know, was responsible for that move. Yes. Because, I mean, I, I am expressing as well to the cry of some that we, we, we kept talking about this reform, you know, government after government talking about the reform, the introduction of what the issues are and um, the need to do this and do that and yet still we just keep on spinning top since 1965 Correct. somebody i think in parliament went through the yeah. the, the um since the, the, the 1965 we've been there have been different proposals to reform and the only the only version of local government that works in this country we must remember we are unitarian state trinidad and tobago let's be real tobago's system works Correct. and you, 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 you don't have to be PNM, UNC, or anything to um, dispute that. The Tobago system works, and what we're trying to attempt in Trinidad is loosely based on that. And I think that it is an exciting time in this country, and I think that, again, local government um, serves the, the basic needs of everyone, and I think all the citizenry should be very um, excited by what is proposed. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the opposition has their, 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 their job to do, to keep the government on their toes. Check, but yeah. I am saying to you, based on conversations that I would have had with them, even up to yesterday, they, they support the reform. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. Well, yeah, I, I, as I said, I, I intend to really have yes. them come in to share their, their side, you know, as to what are some of the, those things that, you know, they have issue with. Yes. Because I don't, I, I really want, I agree with you. I don't think that um, any representative would, would not support a move that would make, to progress, uh, to, to progress yes. in any community. So um, I think it may have had, may have some real issue that we will have to hear from them. Yes. I would know I, as well, and if you could touch on that, that one uh, aspect of the reform at, at, in which I heard, she will now treat with um, specific um, corporations, or all corporations now having extra or additional, sorry, um, duties, so to speak, in yes. terms of under their preview now will be treated with schools yes. and probably community centers so, yes. and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm gathering. And, and, and that is the essence of a community, you mm. know. What people don't understand, okay, I will give you, I, I, I touched on the fact that I have secretaries. So I have a secretary for infrastructure, I have a secretary for education and agriculture, I have a secretary of, um, I have a secretary of community development, I have a secretary of information. They are volunteers from the community that work within my office. Mm -hmm. Their job now is to be my eyes and ears in terms of the development of that within in the community That's right. they also meet with the different community groups within the community that would somewhat mirror what is going on in my office right so you see that type of devolution of power which maybe the opposition was speaking about it really starts from in the councillor's office i identified it there and what i also identify is maurice as you would know there are boards that are attached to the community community center Centers, yeah. there are boards that are attached to the health center there's boards attached to the, the local schools, schools. Yeah. so therefore when there's a synergy between local government the councillor's office and these bodies you would see something better within the communities and i know i know for a fact to coming out of um, i think all of us all when um, you all meet at the either the end of the month every once a month you have those coordinating regional coordinating regional coordinating score. correct and um <laughs> I, I sometimes marveled at when I was there at Separia, um, to some of those co regional coordinating meetings. You had sometimes two and three people, two and three agencies attending these, these, um, these meetings. And the purpose of these meetings, as it's stated in the, in the Act, is to have that, as it says, the name of it, coordinate, you know, to have that synergy between the Ministry of Works, Ministry of um, Agriculture, you name it. And you have that symbiotic relationship, but you, over the years, a lot of the agencies either never attended uh, attend those meetings or take it seriously all right and um that's why you have the issue now with major roads and minor roads yes. and I'm, I'm sharing all these little impediments which you are aware yes. of and others who are involved in the system and will, you will now help me 
share how the, how the reform is now going to treat with those things. So like, for example, we talked about the roads, the major and minor roads, that you will treat as a councillor with those minor roads. Right. But this minor road goes out into a major road. Right. Uh, likewise, a minor drain into a major drain or right. outfall. But the corporation cannot treat with those roads or yeah. treat with those drainage um, that doesn't fall under their purview. And it, it's, it's madness. Sometimes I remember having to deal with an issue where the, the outfall, which is the Ministry of Woods, Woods. Drain, yeah. um, was clogged. But the minor drain, which we had, we, the corporation had control over, we were able to clean that. But it was clogged. So what was happening there? No, not, no solution. And we had to now wait for the ministry to come and treat with that. Yes. Which took six months. By that time, the minor drain got back, back. <laughs> yeah. dirty. So, you know, you're looking at the reform dealing with those things yes. and you're having that uh, a more effective system because part of the reform as well too or added to the reform yes. needs to be transformation of the mind and the whole work ethic and culture in local government which yes. is something that I would want to hear your thoughts on as well. Well definitely I think that um, we have gotten a little accustomed to a culture a lackluster culture within the different corporations we hear it all over. We hear that person say they come early in the morning and they, they leave early in the morning. <laughs> and um, you know that persons are getting paid. And then you have the duplication in some instances where CPEP does w the work that the corporation used to do in the past. And you know, we just need to be mindful in what, as we go forward in creating a, 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 a better system again, um, in Tobago, there will be a Secretary of Infrastructure, just as there is in my office. And that person now would be the person that would liaise directly with the ministry in undertaking these, 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 um, these projects, projects. The infrastructure projects. So as opposed to, as it currently exists, the council would come, the council would make a complaint. Mm -hmm. He would make a complaint to the, the, to the, the, the engineer, the engineer, um, would have to make a complaint to the different um, bodies. The bodies now would have to go through their different engineers. Sometimes the member of parliament would have to get involved and write a letter, and that takes such a long time. Now the term office could finish by Correct. The term so you're creating a system <laughs> now where it is that you're giving the councillors more power, and that power is empowering our, our, our communities, our um, burgesses, and citizens, because in the city, we call our um, the people that we represent citizens, and in, 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 and in the other aspects, we call them burgesses. So we are empowering the, our, our people to understand the importance, just as in other parts of the world, local government is so important. That's right. In, oh, I have fraternity brothers who, my fraternity brother is the public advocate for New York City, Jumani Williams. Oh, yes. He started... We, our political careers um, emerged at the same time, mirrored each other. And I got the opportunity every time I go to New York City, right, to understand how the system is. And, you know, I would come back and, and share ideas. And I would also try to do certain things within my community based on the autonomy they have. Imagine they have money to run their offices, you know, to have a staff within their office. Right. And this is what we are on the cusp of as right, right now. Right. So we would be able to em empower people within our community who are qualified to be able to work for the various That's offices. Right. And, and, and I'm glad you make mention of that because I think people need to understand that um, with the reform will come a lot of responsibility. Correct. Well, more responsibility as we highlighted earlier. And uh, um, the whole idea of that, because I'm concerned, um, Robert, about this, that culture change <laughs> and you know because i'm telling you there are certain things that you, you all will i'm certain experience yeah. that presently the act allows for but we have some public servants you know um staunch in the ways yes. of doing it this way i used to sometimes tell them <laughs> that they are more poli they play more politics than us the politicians yes right because they if they want something to work they make it work. Yes. And if they really want something to stick, they put that in the pipeline and they, 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 they close it off. Yes. All right? So it is important that even with the reform, that the, very, the mechanics of the reform 
you know they need to understand that transformation of the culture and the mental of the people that are going to now be driving the reform all right because i i am i'm yet to see that uh, as well and that has to pay a, a good close attention to that yes. all right so um i trust that the reform really gets its uh, the support that it, it, it requires and that is it is implemented and apart from being implemented it, it really works smoothly Right. And that's why this platform is so important and the platform that I have in Pleasantville is so right. important as well that we have to educate our communities on, on, on a community level because, you know, a lot of people nationally, there's so much clutter with, 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 um, with the mass media. People don't even read the papers anymore, mm -hmm. right? So it's very important for persons to create platforms such as this, use what is available to us, to educate the, the, the population within our electoral districts of the importance of this reform bill. Mm -hmm. It is an exciting time in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of work was put into it. Um, I actually sat and represented San Fernando a couple of times um, with different subcommittees of the reform. And like I said, what we are on the cusp of, I am saying to you, um, you you now can have more faith in your local government representative, representative. Yeah. and i'm glad that you say that because people really want to know friend <laughs> how um how is this system going to serve me yeah all right because I, life. I, I, I'm, I'm in my community i've been seeing certain things and nothing has been happening how has this how will how will this new reform really serve me and effectively too where the services you know i was chatting with a young man um recently and he was we, we had him having discussion about this whole um the property tax yes you know and he made a serious point and you know i said you know it's true he said people want to be comfortable to know that they can pay the property tax and as well at the same time get the right services and the services on time all right because if i'm paying my property tax my my, my um the value of my, my property is going to be increased, as etc. Then the services, water, Correct. lights, garbage collection, Correct. right? These things ought to be effective, and therefore we must ensure you all, in particular, who are in the, the driver's seat at this, at this time, representing, ensure that that is done. That Correct. is done. It is. It is. It is very very important. So, um, Robert, I, I I'm glad that you you highlighted some of these things and. We, do we have a call, Director? No? All right. So once again, I would like to share the numbers in call, to call in. It's 309-8924, 309-8924, Feel free to call in. Pleasantville, your counselor is here. Robert Paris, call in and... I like, I like the, the person who um, spoke to you up with regard to um, empowering. And this is what I'm seeing again. You, uh, you look at Tobago and the Tobago model and how the micro um, economics and the micro business grew in Tobago over the last couple of years. Yes. So local government is to empower the small businesses within your community, the caterers, the cleaners, yes. um, the parlors, it is really to empower them. I think someone is holding right. a call. Do we have a call? Have a call? Hello, good Hello, evening. Hello, good evening. So I like, I like the idea of what it is that that person said. And again, Maurice, we, we as we as local government practitioners just have to be practical. You have to really understand the culture within your community. For instance, in my community, right, a lot of people don't know that the first part of Pleasantville, someone is there? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, where? Call. Call good Call evening. evening. Hello, Hello, good evening. Good evening. Not sure. Uh, we lost, we that, lost that. that. Okay. But well, the yeah, first yeah. part of Pleasantville is an area called the Coconuts. The area is a mixed area, but predominantly East Indian. 
traditional East Indian. And everything evolved around that. Um, there are three families that came from this community. The Sings, the Tellus Fords, and the Dukies. And everyone who's from Pleasantville would know Mr. Dukey, who used to have the snow cone, and his wife now drives around in the car <laughs> with, with... So, you know, you have to understand yes, the culture, the dynamics, the dynamics right. within right. it, right. right? And you also have to respect the differences that uh, we have in the different socio uh, socioeconomic right. differences and the different areas within the community. Yeah. So there's a lot of differences. Yes. Cultural differences, socioeconomic, as you said. Correct. It's important to have that tolerance. Yeah. And just not tolerance, but understanding, understanding. how you treat with, with how you treat with it. You get, because it's yeah. very it's easy like. to offend <laughs> persons to her. Uh, like very yeah. easy to offend I'm just going to um, refer to what Mr. Manning always said is Trinidad is not a <laughs> yes. easy place to, very, to govern. Yes. Right? And and you're right because um uh, you're, you're, as a council, as a local representative, and even as a representative of the whole, you have to understand that your role really after the cut and trust of the politics or the, or the political hustings, yes. you are now representing all of the people Everyone. of that area, Correct. or by extension, the constituency, if you're an um, representative. Do you have a call on the line? Hi, good evening. Pleasant evening. Uh, how are you? I'm all right, sir. All right, good to hear you. I just wanted to find out some information from the councillor. Sure. Sure, go um, One of the things I'm to find out from him is he mentoring any young person at present to take over from him in the future? And also, what is his plans um, for the young people in the sense of motivating them, encouraging them to start their own business, apart from the agricultural project that he has going on. Does he have any, does he have any other projects that he has um, embarking on to start off an entrepreneur program in Pleasantville? Thank you very and much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, well, in terms of, well, I am 44 years old. <laughs> And I'm hoping that there is upward mobility within the People's National Movement and they see and recognize my abilities and my talent. And therefore, at one day, eventually, I will not be the, 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 the representative for Pleasantville. In terms of mentoring, I have a whole bunch of young persons around me. Um, we get that through the, the, well, the radio station. Um, I tell these young people, if you politics is a, is is different. If you're really interested in politics, you can be around me, right? <laughs> and I will teach you politics. But if you you're, you're into the radio station and the different things, I could mentor you there too. So mentorship is not just in the politics, right? So um, I on I was the understudy of the late Maria Norton, who was my predecessor, and um, she and I were very close. And I open my doors for anyone who has the willingness and the ability to want to learn so that we could I could pass on the button when that time comes that's that's the first thing and then the second thing in terms of entrepreneurial um, ventures within the community there's a whole bunch we, we, we started um, we were partnering at one time with with, with um, the school of um, higher learning right in um, in San Fernando whereby we we're giving young persons the opportunity to um, follow into that entrepreneurial um, field. Good. I think there's a call. Hello, good evening. Hi, pleasant evening. Pleasant evening, good caller. Afternoon. Good evening, sorry. Hi, I have a question for your guest, Councillor Paris. Yes. Also, I have a comment. I want to congratulate him based on what I see and hear so far, the work that has been taking place in the hills district which is pleasant film. that's right um i think he's doing an excellent job Thank you. i see he's working with the young people he's bringing in a lot of young entrepreneurs he's teaching them he is basically he's a role model in his community thank you right so that's one of the comments i want to make however one of the questions i will ask him as a counselor and as young person looking on what advice you have to give for someone who is interested in being a counselor or want to get in as a counselor, do you think 
it is encouraging. <laughs> I mean, we see sometimes things happen, you know, to be comfortable out in the field, they're doing their work, they're doing all the up and down and stuff. But we want to know the real deal. We want to know the behind the scenes. How is it? Is it is it fun? Is it entertainment? Is it is it stress? Hmm. What what are the ins and outs are your person looking at? Or is it like parliament when you see some of their this <laughs> job left, right and center? I will listen for it. <laughs> Okay. No, counsel, I know you. you um, I can answer that. Answer that. Well, <laughs> for me, for me, I, I my enjoyment is in my community, Pleasantville. I feel comfortable with the people in Pleasantville. I feel empowered among the people in Pleasantville. Um, I asked them twelve years ago to be their eyes and ears in City Hall, and I've done that. City Hall isn't always a nice place, <laughs> um, and I'm being honest, right? because of the cut and thrust of the politics is not always a nice place but i could always find refuge in coming back to pleasantville and feeling that love from the community and the people that i serve you know um people will tell me that i'm doing a good job um persons who, who even who don't even understand and, and may think that i'm not doing a good job i still enjoy explaining to them uh, how right. i can improve their life right. because a lot of people don't understand local government yeah. and um and one of the things is i don't take myself that serious i remember someone came to the office the other day and they were in a uh, short pants and they said excuse me i'm in a uh, short pants i said well, that's the only one thing I could agree with them in Tobago because look at this. And I stood up. I said, I have one of short pants too. <laughs> yes, one of the things. But I showed them. I said, but look, I have one of short pants too. And they started to laugh, right? I said, let me tell you something. Eh? Not all of the time I want to come to the office in a suit to talk to persons. I need persons to understand. I am your representative. You could, if you could see me, if you could see you in me, that is the type of representation that we need That's we don't need people from the top looking down it's from the bottom going up build and, and everything that i have done it is the people of pleasantville that have put me where i am every good lesson every bad lesson and everything in between it is the people of my community that have supported me today jokingly I, I'm going to tell you, this is a serious story. <laughs> Watson, you came into the community. Well, I was, no, I was going to ask him Watson, you came into the community, <laughs> and he paid persons $300. No, nah, man, I don't want no, to believe paid, that, he man. he paid the persons $300, because all of the persons that were walking there, they support me, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what was, they, 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 they were told to get 10 or 20 people, and they would get the money. So a guy came to the office today, and he said, Mr. Paris, all I get is $200. I say, but... Um, but look, they get three hundred dollars. How come you get two hundred dollars? He said, "Boy, it depends on who you go to." And then my um, my godson's father said, "Well, um, I got two fifty, right?" <laughs> and he said, "Well, listen, all we Pleasantville is Paris. We just eating our food, and uh, we want you to understand that." And I told them, "Eat our food." And vote PNM. All right. Okay. <laughs> I have no problem in that. No, but I, I but yeah, I really wanted to. I had that question here to <laughs> ask. Yeah? Um, and that's not only, but I know we are short. We press for time because my director and watching my cut already. But okay. I want to ask you your thoughts um, because of your seniority, so to speak, in the politics, Mister um, PDP on the scene. PDP on the scene, and not just in, in Pleasantville, right? PDP being on the scene in Trinidad, friend. All right, um, and picking up uh, a, a, a lot of waves, you know, they, they, they're getting up somewhat, they're attracting, all right. Um, just see, this evening when I was coming down to the studio, I heard the news which indicated that the um, actor poll, some survey was done, and the release indicating that the government, the party, PNM in government, it's at its lowest, all right, in terms of um, not just popularity, but in terms of, of Supported by the public as, and, and and the PDP, you know, attracting, you know, raising some dust. What is your thoughts on? Uh, I know we, as I said, you know, we press for time, but give me the short version. The short version. Third party in the, the scene. The short version is is this: there's a difference between government and governance. If you don't understand governance, you will fall into the same problem that everyone in this country has fallen into. Don't fall for. 
um, someone coming and singing a song and a dance and, 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 and saying hoorah, hoorah. That makes no sense because if you really don't, all, all PDP is doing is trying to attract the base by, by appearing to understand their, their basic needs. Local government and all the local government practitioners, as if, if, if you're in the city right reason, should be someone on the ground. But, but, but I can see um, with regards to what took place in Tobago, I mean, that in Tobago is more than just... Um, it, was a, it was a rude awakening for us. We in the PNM need to adjust our sale. We need to look and, and recollaborate, recalculate. But as a person of, in marketing, advertising, I, I, I was trained to understand the science of marketing. Watson Duke is finding a way to market himself to the persons so therefore he would walk in a bus of pants and a boots and a jersey and it would seem very, very comfortable, somewhat to how I am dressed right now. Oh, okay. And that is what the people, that's what is attracting people right but, now. But, but, and I agree, uh, you know, it, it, may, it, 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 it looks, um, it looks, you know, different, you know, he, he, as you say, he down on the ground in a yeah. boots and he dancing and that kind of thing. But Robert, would you say that this is what young people, not just young people, but people, where are people fed up by? I, I just put in it just so to you. I would people say. People fed up. I would and say. And I'm not saying, yes. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, bashing the, the present government yes. or the opposition. I'm saying the very um, spirit of the politics in this country, people are fed up. And therefore, um, if it is for somebody that could come from hell and give me the airs just to hear me out, people willing to do to go there and just listen because you know the basic issues all right the basic issues now i hear the point about um the the reform and um, again as i said it, we will have to see it unfold of the reform treating with some of these basic issues that people have been having and continue to have all right but i think by and large the, the, the pulse of the people of the country at this time, particularly young people in, in, in particular, has that issue. And, and, the last, and something else I want to touch on is that you talked about Watson Duke. And a lot of, I personally believe, and it's just my opinion, um, that the PNM, uh, during its, the, 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 that THE election, spent plenty of time dealing with Watson Duke and about Watson Duke and Watson Duke and Watson Duke and Farley and the rest of the team running away down the hatch. You understand? And I'm saying, um, where was the, 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 the strategy? Um, put, put, again, frankly, the strategy was wrong. And that's just my opinion. And the, strategy, results... the strategy in Tobago is quite different than the strategy that we should adopt in Trinidad. Right? Um, based on marketing and based on, and I'm putting on that cap now, that was Tobago versus Tobago. Right. And then there was also an internal issue within the PNM in Tobago that didn't rub persons the right way. So you would have seen persons stay away, you would have seen persons react, and you would have seen some traditional PNM persons decide, you know something, we're going to teach the PNM a lesson. That's just the politics of the day. We in politics, we as politicians understand, and in Trinidad, I, not to say that I am a great political scientist, but I do believe that the, the approach that we take in Trinidad should be a little bit different, learning from the mistakes that we would have made in Tobago. But this is about representation, and I implore all of my colleagues in the PNM that are in the local government fraternity to get out on the field. There's nothing scary about the PDP, because before the PDP, there was the COP. I've been around. And I remembered in 2007, we were strategizing in Bali's house and we were looking at the COP, you know, right? But the only difference is that the PDP is, is, um, is, at, is trying to attempt to, to attract the PNM base, right? Which people, say, well, well, let's not hide it, is the Afro Trinidad, Trinidadian base. But, but and, and okay, and if that is the case, if that is really what Watson and, and his team um, agenda, then um, what, well, and I trust that the PNM understands that, then I hope too that the PNM is doing something to keep their base. I believe so. 
I believe, I believe <laughs> because that has, that, has, that has been, I think, the attempt by many other parties that came on the scene in the past. Right. To attract the base, I mean, attract the base, attract the base, attract the base. All right? But, um, right. So, yeah. I trust that they, they're doing something to keep the base. I, 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 I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe that, that the, gov the government of the day, the powers that be, are doing their best, and I think we will continue to do our best. All right. Yeah. Well, that's important. I'm glad, and I'm glad that you, you know, you, you put some, you shed some light on the whole yeah. PDP um, thing because I, I heard they, they were rolling in to Pleasantville. I said, but well, I, they oh, didn't, they didn't walk in Pleasantville. <laughs> they, they, they came to the hollows and they walked on the bypass and they went up South Park and walked back down and they, they gathered there and my people was there to give me the intel, intel. and the information. Well, again, as um, any representative, um, genuine representative um, in this business, whether locally or on the national level, um, who has been doing the work passionately for the people on the ground, as you say, and I'm glad that you advised um, your colleagues um, to get out there, meet the people, hear from them, Correct. all right, feel the pulse of the people, all right, and... Um, exciting times, yes, people. Yes, it is. Local government is exciting times. That's right. And, and, and every election is, is organized um, warfare. <laughs> and if you're not up for it, well, then you're in the wrong game. Right. So put on your, 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 your boots mm -hmm. and get ready. Get ready. All right. So, Councillor, I wish we had, you know, a lot of time or more time, I should say, to yes. really get deeper because, I mean, I have some burning, 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 burning you questions. always have me back again. <laughs> Definitely, no you will come back again. And um, so, in closing, I would want to hear your closing remarks. I, we, there is a local election yes. um, this year, uh, yes. I think sometime at the end, coming down to the end of the year. And um, you would be offering, would you be offering yourself Yes, um, Trinidad and Tobago, I will be offering myself once again for service to my community. Um, there are things that we need to complete in Pleasantville. And again, I am mentoring as well because I do believe in succession planning. So that's it. Okay, great, great. Nice. So you ready? You have any, um, <laughs> I should say, but you have any contenders amongst, amongst the full at that vine? That um, find themselves to I'm not certain. I, I, and, and you know, to be honest with you, Morris, I, I, I really don't look at... Um, it's something I was trained to do. I don't really look at my competitors. I focus on myself. I'm my greatest critic, hardest critic. Um, I lose a lot of sleep. Um, for those who have known me, my hair turned white overnight. <laughs> um, but that's okay because Barack Obama's hair turned white as well. <laughs> True. Um, but I, <clears throat> let me tell you something. Eh? When you're in this, you have to be able to, to really, really, really feel it, yes. right? And know that you're up, what you're up against and your opponents is just in your way of where it is you, 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 you ought to be. So I go into a, a, a Zen mode every time election times com comes around. I have my, my team around me that surround me, warn me, protect me, guide me, advise us as well right. to advise me what to do. I'm still fortunate to have um, Mrs. Manning, who is who, who, oh, who yes, my godmother. Yes. I have, I have my, pleasant my father. Evening. Pleasant evening. My Mrs. father, Manning. yes. My father yes. is alive, right? Um, great inspirations to me, right? So I, I, they keep me grounded. Yes. They keep me grounded. But there was, there was an air to Patrick Manning when elections were wrong, eh? <laughs> and I think I inherited that. <laughs> I certainly inherited it. It's something that I you can't explain it, yes. right? And we and we go into war. And and that's, that's right. It. That's right. Well, what I, I do know, eh? and, and I mean, I, as I said earlier in the beginning, that I could really attest us to, to a lot of what you shared here this evening. Um, you know, just not because of my involvement in, in local politics as being a councillor myself, but from before that, and, and you're yeah, involved I, I with you, you yes. right, um, <laughs> through the Youth League and think, yeah. through the constituency of Santa Good Anna and the teaching, Good the times. foundation that we would have gotten. Good times. All right, I mean, a lot that we owe, owe all after God to Mr. Manning and yeah. that team of, of, of elders out of San Fernando East. So I know you're coming from Goodstock, 
and you're, you're wired for the thing, yeah. all right? You're wired for it, and therefore, the fruit of that labor is raising its head now, and therefore, as you said, you're offering yourself yes. back, and that labor, th those fruits, as I said, of the labor will now show its support when that time comes. I mean, by the grace of God. That's right, and the fact that you're there 12 years, um, unanimously, so to speak, you yeah. know, by March, leaps and bounds, you know, Pleasantville really loves Robert, and... Um, that, that, you know, it, words cannot express. I mean, I'm not from Pleasantville. I work in Pleasantville, and I can just imagine how much more could be done and will be done if given the opportunity to continue serving Pleasantville. So, Robert, I want to congratulate you. Thank you I sir. know you will do a good job if given the opportunity again to serve. Thank you so and much. And continue, as the old people say, keep on keeping on, man. The by the grace same. of God. <laughs> All right. By the grace of God. Yes, thank yes, you so much. Yes, yes, and I yes. thank you, Pleasantville, for giving me the opportunity and always and always supporting me and believing in me. And the same way you believe in me, I believe in you. And I love my community. Every time I get an opportunity to speak about it, I will always speak positivity That's right. into Pleasantville, especially the young people. That's of right. And it's about speaking that speaking it, professing it, what comes out, yes. out, out, out of the mouth. Yes. So you're, you're right, you're right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for viewing us here on NCBNTT this evening. Um, with us, we have Robert Paris, Councillor for the Electoral District of Pleasantville out of the San Fernando City Corporation. And Councillor, I want to thank you no for, problem. you know, short notice, as a matter of fact, to, to come no, on no set. Problem, but no problem. as you say, your boots are always on and you're ready yeah. for battle, yeah. even if it means to share the things that you're doing. Correct. And um, we want to also take the opportunity as well to encourage the other councillors from all the various electoral districts throughout the length and breadth of, the, of Trinidad with regards to the, taking the invitation up in coming in to um, share into this series, Know Your Representative. And, and I will take the opportunity as well to invite the person behind the scenes of uh, yes. NCBN yeah, yeah, that's right. to come to Peeville Radio. I've been <laughs> trying to get him to come to Peeville well, Radio well, for a long time. I, well, I so, <laughs> in all fairness... But he will, he, he will come now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, yes, and the person behind the scenes, uh, we want to we will dig up our councillor, um, yes, Nigel doing Cotier, an excellent, doing an excellent, excellent job. job, created this platform for us Correct. to really share, all right, what councillors... All right, the much needed opportunity to share what they have been doing, who they are, and how they do it. All right, so thank you once again. We say God bless you. Stay tuned next week, Wednesday, for our next episode of Know Your Representative. Pleasant evening, all. Watching the day unfold Jada yeah, books is wonderful It's something, it's something to behold